Hey, welcome to another Enneagram podcast. Yeah, that's right. Yet another Enneagram podcast. But this one's different. Another Enneagram podcast is here to help you be a better leader for your team. We know leadership is already challenging enough, and it can be downright frustrating when your team communication breaks down. Another Enneagram podcast is here to tell you stories of leaders just like you who are learning how to lead their teams better with the Enneagram. If you want your team to communicate better, be more productive, and love their jobs, another Enneagram podcast is for you. Hey, welcome to another Enneagram podcast. This is your host, Ryan, and here with my buddy, Cody, and uh, we're excited to get into some stuff today. So, Cody, what's happening? Not much, bud. Just uh, hanging out in Southern California, man. How are you? Doing okay. Is it, uh, is it typical California weather? Just beautiful there right now? What are you dealing with? Man, I'm actually wearing a sweatshirt today. So, uh, we actually sit at about like 6,700 feet um, up in the sky, and so today is cloudy, and it's like... 50 degrees. So I'm yeah. loving it. I'm loving it. Dude, it's it's rainy and a little bit cold here and stuff today too. Uh so it's it's not ideal. We had a good stretch of some good weather there, but but today it's um it's not not wonderful. But yeah. Yeah. Uh but speaking of water, you know, talking about rain, <laughs> you uh you and I were talking just before this about a post that your wife made on Facebook. So yes. it or uh Instagram. So tell tell people what it contained and then yes. tell me what you were saying before, some of the different reactions and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. So um so here at camp, um, our maintenance crew is actually having to dig up like a well. We had like a busted line or something like that. And so they've had to turn the water off. So Alicia, my wife, thought it'd be funny to basically get on Instagram and ask how different people, different personality types would respond to being told that, hey, we're about to shut your water off for an unknown amount of time. How would you respond to that? Um, and my wife's a six. So uh, she actually filled up our entire bathtub um, with water just to have in case. <laughs> She filled up uh, buckets, she filled up uh, cups, she filled up like jugs and it's like organized too. So it's not like just water. It's like we have yeah. like, hand washing water. We have drinking water. We have potential toilet water. Oh um, man. Yeah. So all the things, man. And so anyways, so she's getting, the, she, I think she got like 50 to 60 responses on Instagram. And some of the fun, the ones that were funny to me is like, we had, we have a friend who's a four and they responded and were like, well, you know what, you know, forget the water. If the vibe's right, man, I'm hanging outside, you know? <laughs> um, it's, yeah, I think she even ended it with like, it's all about how I feel, you know? And then, uh, we had a seven friend who said, uh, um, actually this would be a prime time to taste all of the water and compare and see like, which one's better, you know, oh, just, trying to, like, just trying to make something <laughs> up, you know? And then, uh, a lot of the the ones, a lot of the sixes all responded pretty similarly. Like, hey, I would like, you know, fill them all up. I would organize them. I would be prepared. Um, and then it got, it got really funny because she actually did like two pages of just nine responses. Uh -huh. And it was basically like, hey, if you have a nine friend in your life, go ahead and fill up an extra couple of jugs. Um, <laughs> because they were all like, I actually probably wouldn't even care. And I would run out of water and then, you know, get upset and blow up on somebody or something like oh, that. Oh, so. man. Fun stuff like yeah, that. I know my wife saw it and I think, you know, she, she's a six as well. And so she, for her, when she starts thinking about something, she can very quickly like, um, kind of travel down the road yes. with the idea for a while and, and just run with it and kind of even forget, you know, where it all started. And so I know she like sent a whole bunch of responses yeah. to your yes. wife on it. And then, you know, four or five responses in realized that, oh, this was just like about a 24 hour period, whereas she was like planning for the apocalypse into the world, yes. yeah. uh, which is just so accurate of, of so many conversations that, that we've had. So I thought that was super funny. Yes. Um, yeah, I think, I do think my favorite comment though, was we had, a, we have a, a female friend who's an eight and uh, she commented and said, I would be calling the water company every 30 minutes for an update. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that is hilarious. I was like, you mean you would be badgering the water company every 30 minutes, yeah, <laughs> basically. So, yeah, I loved it. I loved Gotta it. Got to fight for those basic human rights, That's you know? Right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so today, uh, our episode is going to actually be mostly an interview that I did uh, with a mutual friend of ours. Uh, and so, Today, uh, you're going to hear an interview with myself and Justin Young. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cody, you know Justin, right? 
Yes, I do. Okay, I was thinking that that you guys overlapped here in Arkansas uh, before you you left. Um, Justin works for a company called Splash. Uh, if you're in the the Arkansas area, you probably would recognize that name, seeing it on some different uh, car wash and um, just automotive stuff. They do more than car wash, change your oil and all that kind of good stuff too. Um, but Justin works in their administrative office, uh, which is in Little Rock. And I had the privilege of getting to work with that team there and teaching them and their whole company about the Enneagram. Uh, Splash honestly, uh, is a company that has really impressed me. You know, it's, it's weird when you're talking about like a car wash company, yeah. you might not think that there's that much to it, but, and I tell this as I'm talking to Justin in the interview, but I remember meeting their, their leadership team and being so impressed uh, with how they wanted to treat their employees, how they're, they, they didn't want their employees to just have jobs. They wanted their employees to have careers, which is crazy when you think about a car wash company. A car wash, yeah. Right. Wow. They, they want to hire people who build lifelong careers with them, which wow. is just phenomenal, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, incredible privilege to work with them. Started doing some Enneagram training with them. And their goal is actually to put every employee, not just leaders, not just their leadership, not just their store managers, but every single employee in their company through Enneagram training. Wow. Uh, and so that's just been really cool. So every month we've been kind of cycling through a new batch of, of people and creating this common language with, within their company, within their branches, uh, within their leadership structure. And so that's just been really cool to get to do that with them and get to know them as a company uh, and different people there. And so was excited to sit down with Justin and ask him a few questions about his kind of Enneagram journey and what it's meant for, for Splash as a company. So uh, any other thoughts before we jump into the interview? No, I just want to brag on that company because I actually have a friend who works um, with Justin at Splash and uh, he identifies as a type seven. And so him and I have had a lot of really powerful conversations about what he's learned actually um, with his short time there at Splash. Oh, that's and, cool. Uh, what's been... I'm um, really helpful for him. I, th I feel like the most is just having people around him that can cheer him on and uh, motivate him with his specific skill set and what he brings to the table. So um, keep it up, Splash. You guys are doing some great stuff. Very cool. All right. Well, with that, we'll get to the interview with Justin Young from Splash. All right, Justin, welcome to my podcast. It is so good to be here. My first ever podcast. This is your first podcast ever? First ever, man. I've been listening to podcasts for years and I've had this dream for a long time. So you are <laughs> making my day. Dude, I had no idea. That's uh, that's an honor for, for me to be your first podcast that you've ever been on. Yeah, so sweet. So, uh, you know, I, I said a little bit of what it is that you do and just a super brief introduction before this interview actually started, but uh, just... For you, tell tell people a little bit about yourself, what you do, your family. Um, yeah, just a little brief background on you. Yeah, so my name is Justin Young, and I work for um, Splash Car Wash and Oil Change. Um, we have 13 locations uh, across the state. Our bread and butter is we offer, we're kind of a one-stop shop offering um, oil changes, express detailing where we vacuum it and wipe everything down and shine your tires and all that for you. Uh, and then lastly, uh, tunnel car washes. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I serve as the director of marketing for them and have for, I guess, two and a half years now. And uh, before this, I worked for Tacos for Life after college for two or three years and loved my time there. I got Going on the personal side of things, I went to Washtenaw Baptist University, graduated in 2014, and do what you do after graduating from Washtenaw, and that is get married. And so, um, yeah, I met met my wife, Kristen, at Washtenaw, and we got married right after college, and since then have had three children. Uh, we've got one named Brecken, who is going to be four in May, one named Ava Joy, who will be uh, two in May, and then one little bitty guy named Judah, who was just born two months ago. Yeah, man. So you're in the thick of it. You, uh, you're, you're busy with work and with home life and 
trying to navigate all that right now, huh? Yeah, just a, a lot of diapers, a lot of correction right now with the little ones. <laughs> But also just really fun times. They're all they're all at really fun ages right now, and I'm just really enjoying, um, just especially during th- these quarantine times. I'm enjoying being able to just spend some. I've had some of my sweetest and best moments with my kids that I've probably ever had in their lifetime during this time. Just being more present at home, and so uh, it's been really good. Yeah. Well, so you mentioned your role is director of marketing with Splash, and. You know, I first, you and I have known each other for several years now, but I first interacted with Splash, what's that, probably been two years ago, you think? Yeah, probably so. Probably about two years ago, got to come and do uh, an Enneagram training for just your like top level leadership. I think there was five people in the room at mm-hmm. that time uh, and just the people from your main like corporate office. And and it was really cool to me, I was telling Justin, before we started recording, that that training was was cool for me because it took Splash as a company and put you guys in a little bit different category than other car washes. And, you know, for me before that, honestly, Splash was just another car wash, just like any other. But I was really impressed with you guys in that meeting and the culture and the team and just what you guys want to accomplish through your company. And so maybe talk for just a, a minute about that and then we'll dive into some Enneagram stuff. Yeah. So I would, if you would ask me as a kid or even in college, uh, what your dream job is or where you think you'd be working, I probably would not have said a car wash. <laughs> so it's been, uh, but it is, has really opened my eyes. One funny thing I like to tell is before I worked in the car wash industry, I used to believe that no matter what price you paid, the wash was the same every time. Even if you paid the $8 or the 23 for the best wash, it was going to be the same <laughs> yeah. wash. But I've since learned that there are actual differences and there are uh, <laughs> little things that are different about each package. So, yeah. um, but anyway, yeah, our, our company is, uh, is, is unique in the sense that we, we do, do, or we do the interior cleaning and we do the oil changes and we do the car washes and that's something that no one else in Arkansas does. Um, but that's just kind of uh, the, the, a side gig, if you will, for us is, is doing all those services really for us. It's um, we've built our brand through um, providing rare customer service that you're not going to get at another car wash. Hopefully that you don't get many other places, but um, for sure at another car wash. Um, and we've just done a, a good job of, of, getting really great people who actually love and care about people. Um, Amazing what that can do for your business. Um, And so getting the right people, um, focusing on on customer service. Um, And then we're just, you know, we're a small business in the sense that we're not a a large corporate chain. And so with that, we've got a little bit, we're a little bit more agile and able to, to do some cool things on the fly if we have an idea. And, and so I, I really enjoy that, just being able to 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 be agile and, and make some decisions and, and do some things that are kind of out of the box. And so, yeah, really enjoying it. We've got 13 locations, like I said, and we've got um, two more under contract and uh, planning for some future growth. Nice. That's awesome. You know, two of the things that impressed me the most about Splash uh, was – one, you guys are, I feel like, really connected to things kind of on the ground in your communities, right? Like, uh, I know you guys do give away some some proceeds to different you know, nonprofit things. Uh, both of us are friends with Daniel uh, over at Deliver Hope, a nonprofit in our area. And I know you guys have done some, some uh, really generous stuff with them, which is cool. And then the other thing that just blew me away in that initial meeting I had with you guys was that somebody, I don't even remember who it was. It was Paul or Matt or or who, but was talking about helping people build careers. And, and that just blew my mind. Like, because, you know, like you were saying, you weren't in college thinking like, man, I hope I get a job at a car wash. Uh, But what you guys were talking about was hiring people and intending on keeping those people like as long as they are working, you know, making careers out of, a car wash company. And I just thought that was incredible just because it would be so easy to just write it off and be like, 
Now we're just trying to get the cheapest labor ever. And if they don't like it, they can move on. We'll hire somebody else to that spot. Yeah. You guys weren't interested in that. And I absolutely loved that uh, about, about Splash. Yeah. On the, on the second point you made, I kind of wanted to say a few things about both of those, but um, you know, we start our base pay for hourly team members is $12 an hour, which is, you know, well above minimum wage. And so, um, and we'll often bring people in for, for higher than that. Um, but it's because we do have high expectations and high, high standards. And we, we've got people that two of our general managers right now who are, you know, paid well, um, have benefits, salaries, started as hourly team members at $12 an hour vacuuming vehicles um, and have really grown and, and been developed through the years. And so that's fun. That's a really fun part of our business. And then as far as our community involvement, you know, we just had three weeks in a row. We're, we're in the middle of it right now, but we, last week we did a frontline hero promotion um, where we gave away free best washes to every hospital and doctor's office and any healthcare workers and then frontline you know, first responders, and we had 484 redemptions of that. Uh, so yeah, that's awesome. Ton of car washes. This week we're doing uh, a shop local week. So if you spend ten dollars and at a local business and bring in your receipt, uh, we'll give you ten dollars off your your purchase. And so that's another way. And then the last thing is next week. Speaking of the nonprofit thing, we're doing a nonprofit week because um, I know these times can be hard as they're relying on donations and fundraising. Um, and so we are accepting donations on site and on social media and then trying to bless their staff with oil changes and washes and all that good stuff. So that's a big part about who we are and, and another big reason why I like love working here so much. That's cool. Well, so let's shift gears and talk a little bit about Enneagram and, uh, and what that has meant for Splash. You know, for you guys, I work with, with you guys on a monthly basis doing some uh, team kind of training and coaching. And uh, we've been running a lot of your new people through it. And, but it all started, you know, with one big Enneagram training where you guys brought in pretty much all of your store leaders, I think, and then even a few other people in different roles here and there. And we worked through Enneagram stuff. But I, I also know for you in particular, uh, that was not your introduction to the Enneagram conversation. So maybe just take a minute and what has been your introduction to that? How did you uh, first learn about it uh, to the point where you were interested in using it with your business? Yeah, so I think we've all done 85,000 personality profiles through the years and different jobs and in college and all these things. And it was actually you, Ryan, that kind of got us at, at City Church uh, onto the Enneagram stuff. But um, we went through it at our church, um, the, our brotherhood, our men's ministry went through it. And uh, it was just incredibly insightful for me. And, and because the Enneagram explains the why, not just the what you do. Um, mm -hmm. And there was stuff that I was realizing about why I do what I do that was deeply rooted in stuff from my childhood and the way that um, I was raised and different life experiences. And so it just gave me a, a whole lot better understanding of why I am the way that I am. And then also gave me a, a, a way better understanding of, of the humans around me every day and how to, yeah. how to interact with them. And so that was my first initial uh, introduction to it was through church. And then really through about a year of kind of, I don't know if self-discovery, that seems <laughs> too ominous of a phrase <laughs> for it, but through a year of self-discovery of going through this stuff, after the end of that, I, I realized that it was hugely uh, important for our, our business to to jump on board with as well. And so, yeah, we had our first session with you and just the response was was awesome. Yeah. So talk about that for a second. What, you know, as somebody who was familiar with it, but it was the first time kind of integrating it with your business, what was that like for you and and yeah, how did the team respond to it? Was there any pushback? Were there any, you know, hurdles with that whole process? Yeah, so I think before we did the training, the only pushback was this is just another personality test. I don't, you know, this is a waste of time. The, that perception from people. Um, and I just, you know, the way that I kind of combated that was just encouraging them with my own personal 
story and how it's impacted my marriage and the, my, my emotional health and, and everything. And I think prefacing it with that helped a lot. But once everybody did the training, there was zero pushback. It was how can we have more? How can we learn more? What, are there any more tools that teach us more about this? You know, it's all about more, more, more after we did it. And so it was really cool to see the, as I was sitting in the room and looking around at our team, um, it was really cool to see light bulb moments going off for everyone. And it was really helpful to leave that meeting and have a common language with all these people that some of them I don't get to work with every day or, or very often. Um, and so just being able to have that common language with them uh, kind of created a, a deeper bond per se. So yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah. Well, that's, um, yeah, that's cool because I know like with you guys, you've got locations all around the state. And so just what you're saying, like you don't necessarily see all those people every day, but how, how has that been helpful? Like just having that common language, even among people that you don't see all the time that might be spread around the state? Yeah. So I think the, going backtracking just a touch as we enter into this question, but the why behind why we wanted to do this Enneagram training with our team so badly is that we were having a lot of misunderstandings between people to where it was obvious that neither person meant to mint it like that or meant to frustrate the other person, but it was happening frequently. And so we wanted to, to have something that would help us to be more effective in our communication with, with each other through those misunderstandings. And then also, you know, because we are about to grow and add locations and add more team members and things like that, it, I wanted to ensure that our business was healthy <laughs> before uh, we, we entered into any more growth. And so that was kind of the why. And then as far as how it's changed the way that I work with my team, our team works together. A few specific examples is I, I work. Uh, so first of all, I'm a, an Enneagram three. So the achiever or the performer or um, whatever <laughs> name you want to use for it today. But both of my bosses or my leaders are fives. And so it really, really helped me realize as a, as a three, I'd, I love affirmation or praise or tell me I'm doing a good job or, or whatever. Yeah. And so uh, it helps me to realize that when that isn't there from, from them, it's not that I'm not doing a good job. It's just, that's not a natural output of a five is to affirm mm -hmm. and praise. And so that was helpful. And even little things like, you know, it changed the way that I present material to them. Like when I come to them, I ha I now have my facts in line and my data kind of lined up beforehand because yeah. they appreciate that. Right. Um, yeah. And I lead, I lead a four. Um, and so there's a girl that works for me um, named Mackenzie and she's a four. And so very creative and unique. And I was trying to fill her plate with things that were not creative and unique and it was not going mm. well and I couldn't figure it out. And so uh, now she is thriving because she's doing what she's kind of wired to do and that's be creative. And so she's doing a lot of our social media and things like that. And so um, that's awesome. And then I also lead a one and I, uh, her name is Savannah and I could not, I felt like there were a lot of, uh, a lot of times where something might not get, taken through to completion. And I realized that it was because I didn't give her the freedom to say, by saying, it's okay if this is not perfect. Like, I, I just mm. want you, this is the general direction. Let's just get started on it. But as a one, she wanted it to be perfect and dialed in before she ever gave it back to me. Right. And right. So yeah. That helped a ton. And then lastly, you know, I work with an eight um, pretty closely, Griffin. He's our director of operations. And um, as an eight, I saw, you know, I saw a lot of strengths in him, but I didn't realize how, how valuable him being an advocate and really he, he always is fighting for the people on the ground, ground level and that, you know, the people in the stores, he's always fighting that battle of considering their opinions and thoughts. And it just helped me realize that that is such a strength that he brings to the table. And so all that to say, it's changed the way I work with my team because it's allowed me to have a better understanding of, of their numbers um, and how mine interacts with that. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's, those are some really cool stories. And I, I know, you know, the different people you're talking about, we've had a lot of those conversations. And so it's cool to, to kind of get a little bit of an update, even 
you know, on a podcast about how some of that's going. And so that's really uh, encouraging to hear. Would you say, how would you say it's changed or affected the organization overall, you know, outside of just your own leadership? Yeah. So first of all, we have a common language uh, now and it's, it's kind of funny, you know, like we're, (laughs) it's not, it's one of those things that we get to, it makes, it makes these differences laughable now and not so serious and egregious and dramatic. Um, And so it's a common language that allows us to have more grace and understanding for each other. Um, And then I think there's been an increase in everyone's appreciation for each other's differences. I think people realize like, how important it is that we have fives on the team and how important it is that we have a four and a, an eight and a one and blah, 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 blah. So um, I would say we're definitely more efficient just because you kind of cut through the misunderstanding layer quicker. Um, and so we're able to kind of navigate conversations. I mean, we had one last week as a leadership team where we were not a knockdown drag out, but having a conversation where there's disagreements on what we should do Um, And it was just so much more efficient to work through that because we were able to say, hey, because you're a, a or because I'm a three, this is why I'm approaching it this way. And because you're a five, you know, that that I can see that from your perspective, blah, blah, blah. So, um, and then lastly, I would say is, is anytime that people improve their home life, their work life improves as well. And so, or their work output or work quality, whatever you want to say it. But it is so cool seeing a lot of, a lot of our team members and managers be able to take this home to their spouses and implement some of these things at home. And, um, and then because of that, they're healthier and they're enjoying work more and different things like that. So those are the biggest improvements I've seen. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, talking about things reaching outside of the office, going back home. It's, I mean, honestly, it's just more of a testament to the culture and the leadership that you guys have that you're wanting to not just hire people for a job, but you're actually wanting to invest in your people, uh, so that they, they are there for more than just a paycheck, right? Uh, they're there because it's making their lives better. And, and so I, I love that. I think that's awesome. I love anytime a company or leadership wants to invest in their people and add value to them. I, I just, that's the kind of people I want to be working with. And so um, I love that I get to, to work with you guys because you have that mindset. So last thing, and we'll wrap up with this is, you know, if you were talking to somebody in a similar position with a different company that was considering something like this, what would you tell them uh, as far as, you know, it, how the training, you know, works or, you know, what it, I don't know, what value it brings to them potentially, just anything in that area, any thoughts there? Yeah, I would say, first of all, uh, you might be able to arrive at at, health, at being a healthy organization eventually and understanding and getting all the benefits from Enneagram stuff without it in about five years, or you can just do the Enneagram <laughs> stuff and cut through all that and, and knock it out in six months or, or whatever. Um, it just accelerates the process of uh, team unity so much. It, I mean, just just having a common language and understanding that everyone is wired differently and that there is strengths to every number that in itself, like if people really understand that um, saves us five years of heartache of trying to do this without this common language. And so um, that's a really big deal. The training, the actual training sessions are super easy. I won't puff up Ryan too much, but uh, yeah, he just does a really great job on, on presenting the material in a professional way that's engaging um, and our, our follow-up, he's great with follow-up um, to make sure that it's not just, a you know, invest money in this in the front end and then see you later. I mean, this really is an ongoing partnership uh, with us and um, just kind of an extension of our team. And so uh, it's fun. You know, the last time Ryan and I had a one-on-one consultation call, which is part of the, one of the packages that, that we purchase with Ryan. But um, I mean, we walked through, I had very specific questions about, I have these people I'm leading and I am struggling with getting through to them 
can we talk about each of their numbers and how how that works and so um there's just some really tangible stuff um yeah so i think i think that would be what i would say um yeah yeah i think so well that's awesome i appreciate that stuff uh if somebody for you know whatever reason wanted to connect with you or learn more about splash what would be the best way for them to do that yeah so um you can so we've got um a website obviously hopefully in our (laughs) world today hopefully we have a website uh (laughs) cleancarfast.com is our website and it's got a list of our locations and um there's some cool stuff on there uh just about who we are and our team um and you can also find links to our social media page uh, pages on there as well so um we're on instagram and facebook um for me personally I am more than happy to give any um feedback or anything additionally to this podcast um yeah I'm trying to think the best way to do it, Ryan, but uh, <laughs> I've got, I mean, my email is justin at cleancarfast.com. So if anyone there you go. needs anything, give me a shout. Well, and I feel like I've talked uh, the the whole idea of working for the company up quite a bit on here. So if anybody is just looking to apply, that's on the website too, I would assume, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. That's good. So there you go. If you uh, have a team that you are wanting to lead, Uh, well and learn more about uh, all that you can do that Uh, but also if you're looking for a job with a great company uh, cleancarfast.com right yep okay we'll put that in the show notes as well Um, justin thanks for hanging out and chatting and being a guest on my podcast i appreciate you and uh, your whole company and what you guys do absolutely i am very excited to have my first podcast under my belt thank you for giving (laughs) me that joy today and uh yeah enjoyed it a lot Hey, thanks for joining us today on another Enneagram podcast. As fellow leaders, we know it can be frustrating when it seems like you always run into the same problems on your team with the same people. But leaders just like you are learning how to lead their teams better using the Enneagram, and you can too. So if you like what you heard today, we would love it if you would share this podcast on social media and leave a rating or review wherever you listen to podcasts, preferably only good you know, reviews and ratings. That would be great. If you'd like to connect with us, you can find us on Instagram or at another Enneagram or head over to our website, another Enneagram.com. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you on the next episode of another Enneagram podcast.